Hello. Hello. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. So we have uh, uh, Deborah from Los Angeles again. Uh, we hope uh, uh, you will provide some uh, information about uh, programs uh, which are available for uh, use. Sure, I'm trying to um, show you the. Oh, here we go. Okay. Hi. Yes. Hello. How are you today? Hello. In Kiev. <laughs> hey, hello from Kiev. Very nice to see you today. So I'll tell you a little bit about the um, next gen. Um, so next gen is about education and awareness. Um, and of course it's designed for a smaller and younger group. Um, it's regionally specific, um, 18 to 30 year olds. Um, and we're selecting applicants from the region that um, our meetings are being held in. And so when I say regions, uh, the regions that um, the ICANN meeting strategy is using is Europe, North America, Latin America, Asia Pacific. And we rotate these through um, those geographic locations using the ICANN meeting strategy. Um, so I don't know how um, familiar, you are, familiar you are with the next gen program. But we're looking for individuals who are interested in becoming more actively engaged in um, their regionally communities, um, who are, are interested in uh, taking part in the future growth of the global internet policy. Um, and so the criteria is that, that you're living and studying in the, um, in the region where the meeting is taking place. So that means that you must be um, currently enrolled in university um, studying in the region um, that the meeting is taking place. Um, so uh, another criteria is that you're able to spend the allotted time at the meeting. The meetings are generally, we expect you to spend five to seven days at the meeting. And there are mandatory sessions that you must attend, but you're also allowed to um, find the sessions that interest you, and you have a lot of freedom to attend those sessions as well. Um, find the um, sessions that you know are, are more interested, interesting to you, and you're allowed to attend those. Uh, we're we're looking for those individuals who are interested in the internet governance, the future of the internet and um, other topics that are um, covered at the ICANN meeting. Um, we ask you that you're willing to present a five to 10 minute presentation um, at the meeting. And this could be a presentation um, of research that maybe you've been working on or have completed, um, an activity that you're doing related to ICANN's work, maybe a, a website that you're affiliated with, um, that's related to ICANN's work, maybe a thesis project um, that you're working on. Um, our next meeting is um, coming up um, in Denmark, and that's going to be held from 11 to 16 March. We just opened the application on the 26th. I'm very excited about that. Um, so I encourage um, you to apply. It's in the European region. Um, so that is open. And um, of course, we, we, we encourage everybody to apply for that. Um, you know, we, we want to get as many applications as, as possible. Um, we're looking for strong applicants. Um, so, you know, um, you're welcome to apply. Um, the application round will close on the 4th of November. Um, so you do have some time to, you know, gather your thoughts. Um, um, and then we'll make the announcement on the 2nd of December of selected um, next gen. Now, after being selected, um, there's a lot of work that goes into um, preparing you before the meeting, um, before you even go to the meeting. So we assign you to an ambassador and you speak with your ambassador weekly. There's um, 
I can learn courses that you take and that actually educates you on all the different facets of ICANN. I send out um, weekly emails and um, try to answer questions that you may have about, about ICANN. And we just really try to get you prepared for the ICANN meeting, um, let you know what to expect um, at the meeting, um, and just try to give you an education prior to attending the meeting so that you don't walk in not knowing what to expect. Um, and the ambassadors, um, we have generally 15 participants, next-gen participants, and each ambassador um, is assigned three next-gen. Um, so the ambassador um, will make contact with his, his or her three next-gen participants weekly, and you'll receive a weekly email from that um, ambassador. So you're always in contact with one of us um, prior to the meeting so that you don't feel like you're lost once you get to the meeting. And then once you're at the meeting, you'll be given the opportunity to meet with ICANN staff, ICANN community members, the CEO of ICANN, uh, board members, company leaders. And so it's a really good opportunity to um, get involved and it's a good networking um, environment as well. Um, we also want the next gen members. The whole idea of bringing you to the meeting is that you gain the knowledge about ICANN, about internet government governance, about the whole multi-stakeholder model. We want you to take that back to your university and share that information. You're um, encouraged to create webinars. We give you the tools to create webinars and share that information um, and teach others about internet governance and share the ICANN um, message. And, and we support you with that. I, I'm always on. Um, other Skype calls and other webinars um, to help, you know, um, teach others about uh, what we're doing here at ICANN and about internet governance, about the multi-stakeholder model. Um, and I do share my, um, you know, all of my information and all of my resources um, to support those efforts. Um, and so that's basically next in a nutshell. I mean, you know, the criteria is very basic. You're welcome to go to our website, which I can share um, the link. I'm sure you probably already do have the link, but I'll share it on, um, you know, I can send you my email. You're welcome to email at me at any time you have questions. Um, I'm here to support the program, of course, at all times. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, may I? Uh, uh, I know what you ask one question. So, um, uh, could you clarify? Uh, uh, does Ukrainian youth uh, eligible to participate next uh, uh, ICANN meeting as, uh, in a next-gen program? And what is the difference between like a regular next-gen and the next-gen ambassador? Does next-gen ambassador is uh, like an old bachelor of a next-gen program or it, uh, this person can be from fellowship or other uh, community? Um. The Next Gen Ambassador is a previous Next Gen member. So for example, somebody from ICANN uh, 50, 57, for example, could apply as an ambassador to come on as an ambassador, um, not a fellows. Um, so anybody who from a previous um, Next Gen um, meeting is eligible to participate as a next gen ambassador if they not if they not have not already done so. So anywhere from I can, you know, 54, 55, 56, 57, they're eligible to apply as an ambassador and come on and serve as an ambassador. Once you've served as an ambassador, then you can go on and apply as a fellows and move on to apply and uh, move on to the fellowship program. Um, so that's the, the, the difference there. Yeah, and, and about Ukraine, Ukrainians can participate next meeting? For uh, next year? Yes, uh, so meeting at uh, uh, Copenhagen, I, I guess. Uh, can we put, can be applied? Um, it's, if they're in the European region, let me double check real fast. Um, the, 
So the, the, the geographic region. Yeah, so Ukraine, Ukraine. Ukraine, Ukraine is a part of Europe, but uh, yeah, it's, it's part of Europe, and it's on the next. It's, it's on the um, yes, yes. You're on the ICAN European region. You yeah. absolutely can uh, are eligible to apply. Great. I just checked. So great. Uh, so yeah, you, you are eligible to apply, and I encourage you to do so. So I very hope that we will. Uh, uh, do you know, uh, 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 are any uh, participants uh, from Ukraine uh, was uh, participated in Next Gen program already and can be uh, ambassadors or you are? I don't have any this round. Um, yeah, I'd I have to look. I, I, I'd have to get back to you on that question. Because okay. there's been um, just a, maybe just a handful of um, ambassadors. I can't recall if there's any, if there have been any from Ukraine. I'll have to double check. Okay, great. So, do we have any do we have any questions from our young participants? So great. Please present yourself. Uh, hello, my name is Valerie, and uh, I would like to ask you: Is there any special advice or recommendations for the new participant that you can give? Uh, to get involved in uh, all this, uh, all this. Thank you. Well, first of all, um, in order to be selected, I would say on your application, fill out the application with a lot of it. Like when you answer the question, do not answer it with just one sentence. Um, that's very important. Fill it out with as much information as you possibly can, because that's what the people who are um, Looking at the applications, we have um, five individuals who are actually um, vetting the applications. I do not do them myself. We have other people who are doing them to make it fair. Um, if there's applications that have just one sentence on the que answering the question, they're pretty much going to be scored low. So I would encourage you to put as much information as you can on the information on the questions. Um, you know, give a good answer, a nice full answer. Um, ask a lot of questions. Uh, once you're, you are selected, ask a lot of questions. Take all of the I Can Learn courses. That's my my biggest um, advice to you: is learn all you can before the meeting. Once on the ground, once at the meeting, introduce yourself to as many people. Put your hand out bring cards with you, um, introduce yourself, ask questions, and meet as many people as you can and make this the best networking event as you possibly can. And do follow up after the meeting. I mean, I try to follow up and make sure that people are still being connected and uh, reaching out to the regional um, um, contacts. Um, but it is, it is up to you to make sure that you continue to be involved. I would like to know maybe, <clears throat> dear presenter, can name some most successful projects of digital governance in the world which is really succeeded. I mean, in the real life. It's, it's not quite in our circuit, but. Uh, but I knew for this topic, we just kind of a question I wanted. Yeah. So Deborah, the, the, the young gentleman is asking about some successful uh, projects in, in uh, digital governance uh, which uh, might be uh, related to ICANN or any other organizations. It's, it's uh, a little bit far from our discussion, but it's a question. So do you, do you have, uh, know some success story about the digital <coughs> governance? Oh, digital governance? Could, uh, yeah. uh, substitute, for example, paperwork, el eliminate at least par uh, partially. Yeah, so in internet governments, so the digitalization of all the process of uh, the managing process, so um, can you provide something about maybe maybe so like a paper, successful like, communities, like a communities. electronic uh, communication inside ICANN that's no paper, only email oh. or... I see what you're saying. 
Oh, so, oh, I see. Yeah, that, that I would have to get back to you on. Um, that's definitely outside my area of expertise, um, the technical um, aspect of ICANN. Um, but, I mean, there is definitely a lot of good information out of there that, that can be gained. And that's something that um, when I call in the expert to speak to the next gen, those are the questions that are asked and answered um, by the speakers that come in to speak to the group. That, of course, that's outside of my expertise and um, my ability to answer. But I, I can um, get that information for you. Um, but again, these are the types of questions that you as the next gen ask, and me as the um, as the um, person who is finding experts to come and speak to you at the meeting um, is responsible to um, find the experts to to come and speak to you and, and answer those types of questions for you. So, but I can find that information for you. So great, uh, <clears throat> uh, um, Deborah. I have uh, one uh, maybe last question. Uh, uh, what about the uh, references? Uh, does uh, our participant uh, need to provide some reference to prove uh, his uh, willing and his competency? And what uh, uh, kind of reference uh, I expect to receive? Thank you. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not necessary i mean it, it it may be helpful to to provide a reference um but it's not necessary i mean we're, we're looking at your application in terms of the way that you're answering the questions um if you have a reference of course put it on the application that's of course going to be you know a little bit more helpful um if you have a reference um but again it's, it's the way that you are wording your application, the way that you're answering the, the question, um, you were looking at your ability to answer the question, your passion, um, your background, you know. Um, you have the opportunity to upload a, a small, short, one or two minute video onto your application. That's always helpful. If you'd like to do that, you're welcome to do that. Most times people don't, but if you, you have something like that, you are willing to um, upload a little video, that's very helpful. So, but references are not necessary. So, so great, uh, Deborah. We see that uh, this is, so next gen, it's an uh, absolutely open club. It's, uh, absolutely. It's an yeah. So thank you. I hope to see some uh, participants from Ukraine uh, in, at the next meeting. I hope I, I will advertise this program. Uh, I will do, do, do my best uh, to receive some guys. So any any questions from public? No? So thank you. Thank, thank you. you for contribution. Okay, could you send me in an email the question that the gentleman, the young uh, man asked and so that I can have an answer for him email back to you? Great, we will share, uh, we, uh, okay. Uh, I will share your email and uh, he will be able to send you a question directly, okay? Okay, thank you so much. So, and I hope to see all of your applications. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Great day. Bye-bye.